What animals are in the boundary waters? There are moose, black bear, otters, wolves, there are beavers, pine martens, mink, chipmunks, porcupines, there are fox, weasels, snowshoe hares, osprey, there are loons and ducks and so many different animals in the Boundary Waters. And there are different things that we need to know before going into the Boundary Waters so that we can respect the wildlife and we can keep them safe. So a big thing that we need to know before going into the Boundary Waters is that black bear can smell for a long ways away. They'll be able to smell us cooking, they'll be able to smell our food. And so what we wanna to do to prevent them from coming and eating our food is we will have a bear safe container or we will hang our food in the trees so that they can't get at it. We don't want bears to be eating our food for a few different reasons. We don't want them to be starting unhealthy habits and depending on people for food. We don't want to scare them or scare us. And we also just don't want them to be eating the food because it's probably not healthy for the bears. They are most healthy in their own habitat, eating the food that is natural for them. And so to protect them and ourselves, we will be hanging food in the trees. Something to note about moose is that, yes, we want to see moose. They are gorgeous and it's just cool to see them. But in order to see them, we do have to keep our voices down a little bit while we're out and about. They're going to leave if they hear us. Same with black bear. Um, a lot of the animals in the Boundary Waters, the louder we are, the fewer we'll see. So if you are nervous and you're out kind of by yourself, you know, you can talk to yourself a little better, sing a little bit of a song quietly, just so that you're letting the animals know where you're at. And if you do want to see animals, especially when we're canoeing around on the lakes, we'll keep our voices down so that we don't scare away the animals and we get a chance to see them and so that they're more comfortable in their own habitat because there's not a lot of habitat left in the world for these animals. So when we're visiting the Boundary Waters and stepping into their habitat, we definitely want to be mindful of that and not spook them as much as possible. Just like we don't want to feed the bears, we don't want to feed the micro bears. I call chipmunks and mice and gophers micro bears because they like to come into the campsite and take your food as well. So we won't be feeding them. We don't, again, want to give these animals unhealthy behaviors and habits. We want to keep them healthy too. We'll try to keep our food away from them so that they don't get sick as well. I know that sometimes the squirrels are known to get into some trail mix or things like that, but we don't need them eating chocolate or even feeding them nuts because they need to be able to survive on their own. If you're interested in knowing more about the mammals in this area, there are some field guides and books that you can get. I'm not affiliated, of course. This is just for your benefit if you want to check them out. Some of the animals in the Boundary Waters are endangered, and this is their you know, healthy habitat that they have left to live in. So that's another thing to keep in mind when we're out and about. That leave no trace mindset is really important because we don't want to litter and put things into the environment that can hurt these animals. And that can be everything from throwing your fish carcasses into the lake to throwing your trash into the lake or even just leaving trash behind at a campsite. We want to be keeping things as, sm as similar to what it was like when we got there as it can be so that you can't tell that we were there. If you have specific questions about animals in the Boundary Waters or any concerns or things like that, let us know and we will be happy to answer your questions. I will see you in the next video. Bye.